Welcome to the Edge of NFT podcast with your hosts, Jeff Kelly, Ethan Janney, and Josh Krieger. We aim to bring you not only the top 1% of what's going on with NFTs today, but what will stand the test of time. We explore the nuts and bolts and the business side, but also the human element of how NFTs are changing the way we interact with the things that we love. This podcast is for the futurists and dreamers, the disruptors and creators, the fans and connectors, and the makers and doers that are pumped about this ecosystem and driving where it goes next. Collective learning is the framework upon which the recently launched NFT platform by Fetch.ai was built. Emma has an MSc in physics from the University of Cambridge and is an experienced software engineer with a demonstrated history of working in the research and crypto industry. She is adept at coding using Python and C++ and is skilled in data science and of course, machine learning. Emma, it's great to have you here. Impressive background. Sounds like it's going to be a, a riveting conversation. Great. Thanks, Ethan. I'm really excited to be here as well. Um, we've had uh, a great engagement with our uh, Cola and Paint platform uh, so far. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to be able to share it with you all today. That's great. That's great. When when Ethan said that, I thought he said riveting for a second. We just had some frogs on the show last week. And, and I was like, wait, wasn't that last week? We've had a yeah. lot of shows. We so, did have um, a riveting no, show last week. <laughs> lots of puns, lots of puns on that show. That's for sure. Is that a but, frog in your but, background, Josh? Is that one of the frogs? No, no, actually it could be, but no, I've had this background for a while. Um, what is that on the on the left? I think that's the, job of the hut, isn't it? It like the digitalized. It kind of looks like it. Yeah. <laughs> it is, is that C three PO too? It tell. looks like it. And then randomly the pink panther. I don't know. <laughs> well, we're it's we're fun. we're really excited, uh, Emma. You know, um, our show is all about convergence of technology and culture, and and what you're doing at Fetch with this project that you're leading sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and says a lot about you that they gave you this uh, massive responsibility to sort of uh, break new ground. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I just hope I uh, hope I explain it well. And uh, I think it's really exciting because, like you said, that influence, that sort of interface between people and technology, um, is really at the core of what the Cola and Paint is about. So the central part of it is that we've got a machine learning model that produces artwork. And we've also got input from people who shape the artwork in the way that they want to go. And uh, the end result is, is these artworks that we're, we're minting as NFTs uh, that are both, they're both AI and they're, and they're human beings, so. Very cool. Well, just to take a step back, I mean, uh, Fetch is a, is a leader in, in the industry and, and um, you know, maybe not everyone knows the origin story. How did the Fetch, uh, this idea come together for Fetch and how did you get involved? Mm -hmm. um, so what Fetch does um, a lot of things around uh, the decentralized economy. Um, and one of them is collective learning. So basically there's all of this machine learning uh, stuff now, sometimes it gets called AI, um, that's do just doing incredibly cool things. So you can get models that uh, detect cancer from slides, you can get models that uh, drive cars, you get models that detect fraud. Um, all of these things that we used to think were something only a human could do, like detect faces in a picture. Now we've got machine learning models that can do all of these. And um, that's just really exciting. But there's a lot of uh, drawbacks still, things that, uh, things that aren't great. Like these models, they tend to be proprietary, they're owned by like one big company. Uh, the data that you need to train them, either you need to be like Facebook, Google, those kind of people like with a huge lake of data to train this stuff on, um, or, or there's the data that you need, but it's uh, like it can't be shared, it's got to be kept private. Um, and, you know, ordinary people can't really benefit from these models that are often trained on their data. Um, so that's where the idea for collective learning came in, um, that using uh, tools from the decentralized economy like smart contracts, we can, we can uh, enable people to benefit from their data, to collaborate, to train these algorithms and then, and then get the benefits from them at the end. So I guess that's all maybe like a little bit abstract. The idea between co Cola and Paint is 
let's do this in a way that everybody can like see and understand. Um, people can people can see like artworks, they understand what they like, uh, what they don't like. Um, and so the platform, yeah, there's a there's a model at the center that's producing these artworks, and then there's people um, controlling it, shaping it, and getting a benefit from the end because they get the the proceeds from from the NFTs. I see. And how did you get involved? Were you drafted from the outside, or were you already working at Fetch? And and um, you know, how did did you suggest the project, or or mm -hmm. did you join the team? Um, so my background is in machine learning. So um, I worked in a research group for a while. Um, I'm always interested in like what's the next cool thing that you can do with a machine learning model. Um, I joined Fetch because I thought that um, the combination of machine learning and decentralized economy uh, had a huge number of things you could do with it. And then this project uh, came from, uh, I think we're kind of inspired by lots of these um like algorithmic art ones so that that's something that's very cool in nfts is art that's made by an algorithm um that you know hasn't really been seen before so things like um like art blocks um i somebody must have seen crypto punks and gone wow couldn't, couldn't we build one of those <laughs> um and uh yeah really the like the huge amount of creativity in this whole whole space um, and we thought, you know, let's let's combine that with the collective learning that we're already building. Um, yeah, yeah, it totally makes sense, right? I mean, um, everything is building on top of everything and sort of getting mashed up in really interesting ways. And um, what Artblocks is is doing is really cool. And it sounds like what you guys are doing, you know, establishes your own point of view on on what the future can bring in terms of converging technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Yeah, it's fun to hear about this Kohler and Paint project. Uh, you know, I've got a creative background, played piano, you know, like to mm -hmm. draw and things like that. Uh, our uh, our podcast art is something that I created. Um, mm -hmm. But like, yeah, I'm curious kind of how, how this came together. Like, was it just one day this idea fell in, fell in your lap to do a generative um, art type project, collaborative art type project? How did this... How did this originate and uh, and how did it develop? Mm -hmm. um, we had uh, so there's there's been some very interesting like papers in the field uh, about art generation um, and uh, like there was a big breakthrough architecture that someone designed for a model called uh, StyleGAN. Um, so this produces art which is way way cooler looking than all the previous art. Um, and so I guess kind of inspired by that um yeah that was a was a key thing it's interesting you mentioned music because i still haven't seen the same kind of thing for music really it's very hard to get a machine to write music that isn't like you listen to it and you think like oh okay like this little bit makes sense but then you listen to the whole thing as a whole and you're like it kind of has no structure to it it never comes back to like the original chords it just kind of wanders off in like some weird direction so yeah right. it's I mean, one of those things that elon musk mentions a lot right when he's talking about like Neuralink and his uh, approach to uh, handling ai the, the creativity part of it right and really trying to reflect what humans do uh, from a creative perspective has been very difficult it seems like on the roadmap for ai that that's a pretty big challenge uh, versus all the uh, you know left brain type stuff um, mm -hmm. curious do you agree on that point like it sounds like it is a big challenge you mentioned already but is that is that something that can be overcome with uh with ai machine learning do you think um i mean i think the the field keeps like coming on in leaps and bounds really um it's you know each each time i see like a new th a new model like oh it can make better art that kind of thing it's often like I guess it doesn't fail in the same way a human would do, which often makes it a bit difficult to kind of understand. Like, uh, you know, if you taught a human to, I don't know, draw, it would uh, maybe maybe they'd like have faces that looked a bit weird and lumpy. Whilst your your machine learning model, maybe most of the time it makes faces, but occasionally it makes just like some completely random mess, and you've got no idea why. Um, so. 
Yeah, so I guess that's uh, that's a bit of a roadblock um, in something like generating art. You know, it, it's fine because you can you can take the cool looking ones, um, but in something like self driving cars, which well, we meant to have them now. You know, I'm sure 2021 was meant to have self driving cars in it, yeah. um, but uh, but yeah, you know, getting the models so that they they don't just fail in really weird ways and that we can we can understand why they're failing is is still is still a big problem in the field it's a great concept though of collaborating with human intelligence and you know artificial intelligence to create art and music you know i i know i'm i'm pretty impressed with uh just my simple garage band uh, uh software on my macintosh has got like these drum, these, you know, quote unquote drummers, you know, and you mm -hmm. can, you can give them different tempos to play. You can uh, decide which actual, you know, uh, drums they're going to use in, in a specific segment, things like that, styles, whatever. You can mm -hmm. speed up the tempo, slow down the tempo, change the mood, change the intensity. It does a pretty good job. You know, it's like, it's mm -hmm. like your own private robot drummer. Right. And so I think, <laughs> um, I think that there's there's a lot of space here for the kind of stuff that you're working on in music and art, right? Of of like, hey, let's hold hands with robots and make art. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's a very cool idea. Um, I'd love to see like yeah, or like machine learning generated music as a as an NFT. Um, I think that'd be really unique. Yeah, great idea. Well, wait a week, and I'm sure someone <laughs> will be working on, on that next. Right. Yeah. So with with Kohler and Payton, I know we're going to uh, do a little demo here in a bit, but would love to learn you know more for our listeners of how it works. Like, what is that experience like? What does the the user experience look like at, at the intersection of the AI and machine learning you know aspects of the platform? Mm -hmm. um, so the way the platform works is um, so everybody who's taking part, um, they all uh, see this generator with uh, some uniquely generated randomness. So these generators, they need some, uh, they need a source of randomness to turn into the art. Like if you imagine it's just an algorithm, if it didn't have a random source, it would just produce the same thing each time. Um, so there needs to be some random input for it, which people generate um, by drawing us a little picture. Um, the art doesn't come out looking at the pictures, it's actually just used to, to seed this, this generator. Um, so that's the first step. Um, and then the um, machine learning model tries its best to make uh, cool looking artworks. Um, so it's, we, we've trained the model on a data set that we've uh, collected of open, open licensed um, images uh, from the internet. So what people see is they see what the model thinks is art at that sort of stage in its training. So, Sometimes uh, it's quite good at picking out sort of like patterns and things. So it often gets eyes. It knows about eyes, like an eye is a nice repeating pattern. So it'll stick eyes sort of randomly on things. Um, and it has a bit of a sense of like interesting colors and patterns and things like that. Um, and that's like the first stage of the voting. Um, everybody votes. Um, we take the winners from this. So from everybody who's staked their, their tokens to take part in the competition. Uh, they get to vote for the winners. We take those winners, we take them through to round two. Um, they get fed into the training of this algorithm. So we trained a bit more and we say that these are the cool ones They produce more like this. Um, so you can see as a user from stage one to stage two, like it's got, it's, it's, uh, it's using some of the patterns, some of the colors um, that were selected from stage one. Um, and trying to trying to use them more because it's it's learned that that's what uh, that's what's what's good, um, what people like to see. And then there's another round of that, um, and then the winning images from the third round, um, we mint them as NFTs. Um, so cool! Wow, yeah, I love <laughs> I love that that uh, that rhythm, you know, of the process, right? And and you know, finding ways to collaborate between you know, an AI and, um, you know, and human mm -hmm. feedback, you know, we just don't see that that frequently. I, maybe it happens a lot behind the scenes, but we certainly, you know, in our circles don't hear about that that much or see um, that mm -hmm. in action. So um, this yeah. project really sounds like it's going to elevate 
um, awareness uh, of this kind of concept. And I think a lot of people might take that mm -hmm. and um, be inspired by it to develop um, other projects or, um, you know, other concepts around similar ideas. It's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. Sort of, it, it kind of reminds me of, of improv, something that the three of us have done where you know, you're, you're kind of in this troop and, and sometimes there's a call out from the audience of something random that has mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. has nothing to do with anything that, that you had in mind, but you just roll with it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you get feedback based on what, what the audience likes and what they think is funny. And you kind of go in that direction. And, and mm -hmm. as the troop, um, does more and more projects together, they get more comfortable with each other. And, mm -hmm. you know, anything that they get thrown at them, they can make it awesome. Right. Uh -huh. and it sounds like uh, you've never had of... anything that stumped you. you. Somebody doesn't, isn't like, Oh, to totally, totally. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's why um... improv is entertaining. The, the, the part <laughs> of the entertainment of improv is the awkwardness that you get to watch <laughs> performers having to figure watch, out what to do. Watching them suffer. Yes, intentional. The more, yeah. more difficult, the better. <laughs> yeah, cool. absolutely. Um, let's, let's just take a step back here and talk about the bigger picture of collective learning and its sort of range of use cases. Um, where can this all go? What are some of the potential areas where this could be applied and how how do we optimize this type of, of thing? What what's on your mind and um, you know keeping mm -hmm. you up at night in terms of what what's next? Um, the so yeah, it's useful in a huge number of areas wherever um, machine learning models um, wherever machine learning models can be used. One of the key ones that we have looked at is healthcare. So in healthcare, lots of health data, obviously it has to be kept private. Nobody wants to share their, um, their sort of their private health data. You know, you don't just want to upload that to some central server, um, but there's still obviously a huge um, use that could be made of that data to say, diagnose things from scans, um, to make, um, to sort of uh, classify slides, that kind of thing. Um, and so this is something that we've been um, focusing on. There are a bunch of techniques that you can use so that you can, everybody sort of takes the model, trains it a bit on their own data and then, and then kind of passes it on. Um, and in that way, you don't have to share the, um, the private training data. Um, you just get the benefit of this, this model in the center. Um, so that's a use case that we're, um, that we're very excited about. Um, other ones are um, we've got uh, we've been in talks with some uh, sort of transport ones. So uh, making you know cars now like a supercomputers on wheels, right? So there's an awful lot of data there, but again, uh, it's kind of privacy concerns and uh, and also that people sort of say, well, why would I bother like sharing my data? Uh, why why do I bother training like this machine learning model on my car where it's like consuming my power? Um, and that's the other thing is that using smart contracts, you can incentivize people to, to share their data, to do these kind of tasks. Um, so you can say, yeah, you know, your, your update to this model was really useful. Um, uh, you know, it's a reward for using your electricity in your car for, for training this, this uh, model, that, I don't know, say predicts when electric cars need to go to charging points. Um, uh, and so in reward for that, you can get some, some cryptocurrency. Um, and because it's all uh, a lot more seamless, you know, um, it's, uh, we can incentivize things otherwise wouldn't have, wouldn't have been economical to do. Right. That's so interesting. It, it reminds me of uh, my former life in, in, in the consulting world. I worked on a predictive analytics project trying to look at trends around homelessness for veterans. And there were 60 different mm -hmm. systems around the country and different data collection teams. And it sounds like something like this could have helped them sort of predict um, patterns around preventing homelessness among veterans. So the, if, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, that sounds like a really important kind of use case. Um, Certainly uh, machine learning models can um, often do very complicated kind of, you know, because it's not a simple like this means this kind of relationship. It's it's a huge number of different factors. Um, and yeah, machine learning models can uh, can 
find those patterns that a human wouldn't be able to find. And yeah, with collective learning, you don't need to just, you know, have one person that has all the data. People, people, can, people that hold data and come in together and, and train this, train the model together. And in, in, from the optimization side, is it just repetition and practice is, or is there more to it? Um, in terms of training the model, you mean like how, how it gets better at its, at its task? Yeah, is it just a matter of like practice makes perfect? Mm -hmm. um, the way these models get trained is something called as essentially they, they are learning from their mistakes. So the, like the errors that they make get sort of sent backwards through the network. And you can say, so you've got this sort of network and it's got um, the inputs come in at one end and they get kind of transformed through layers of this network until you get outputs that say, I don't know, uh, classify um, a, like um, a scan, a, uh, like having this disease or not having this disease maybe. Um, so when it makes a mistake, you can sort of propagate the error backwards through this network and work out which of the weights were wrong. Uh, which of them ought to be ought to be changed um, and you do loads of steps like that um, and and gradually your training progresses and the model gets better at capturing those patterns got it machine learning 101 <laughs> it's, kind of, it's a, a tricky topic bit. to explain but <laughs> no, uh, very good it reminds... sounds a little bit like a lean startup methodology right <laughs> yeah make something terrible mm -hmm. and then you know like, iterate through the mistakes um, exactly so uh, this is fascinating stuff, and I'm really excited to uh, for this unboxing coming up. But I got one more question uh, for you before that. We know you're super sharp, um, and you're you're keeping track of the, the coolest stuff in the space with with tech and art now. Uh, wh what NFT projects and platforms, uh, you know, either around right now or or maybe that you foresee, uh, stand out to you as potential game changers here in the next? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. call it long term. I know five or ten years is hard to project, but what do you think? Yeah, <laughs> it's tricky, especially when like the space is moving so quickly. Um, I guess I think the the lots of the generated art, generative art uh, stuff. Uh, you know, it looks really beautiful, and the algorithms you use to make it are really interesting. Um, so, yeah, like uh, the, those fidenzas from Art Blocks uh, just look really nice, and the the pattern that they use to make them is is it's amazing like what sort of beautiful things can come out. Um, I think some of the ones, uh, I guess, that have been already been around for a couple of years will still be around. I don't think CryptoPunks are gonna go to zero anytime soon. Um, but I guess the ones that are fun uh, where your NFT gives you access to something, like uh, I spoke to, to Josh about uh, Zed Run horse racing. And I had a little look at that after our conversation. I was like, this is fun. Like you, you buy your horse, you get to train your horse. Um, and yeah, we've seen, you've seen like a huge amount of, uh, personal engagement with people as things like board eight yacht club, where, you know, it's not just like a collectible thing. It also gives you access to something, you know, some way of something you get to interact with. Mm. Speaking of, of, of beautiful, there's now the mutant apes that have come out, um, and they're very mm -hmm. disfigured in a beautiful sort of way, I guess. And, <laughs> um, you know, for, for those folks that, that don't know, they also dropped M1, M2, and M3 mutant viruses, um, these capsules that can you can turn your board ape into a mutant. And the, the M1s, the most rare ones, are selling for a million dollars. There's <laughs> like oh my gosh. Eight, eight, wow. eight lucky people that just got airdropped a million dollars um, on, <laughs> on Saturday uh nice nice way to start off the the weekend and uh <laughs> yeah i guess the m2s are going for seventy five thousand, and the m3s um are going for twenty five thousand. so either way not a bad airdrop uh to say the least uh if i didn't <laughs> transpose it i apologize if they, any ape holders out there um listen to this and i transpose the information but <laughs> I, I think... ourselves of all liability there for any kind of <laughs> cautious guidance on this thing you know but but it's i think fun. to your point um uh, like just the 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 genre of art is just amazing and, and unlimited in its possibility there's art that dances now and and it's just going to keep going and going and going mm -hmm. 
And it's yeah. about community and, and having fun. There's so much about NFTs. I think that the real, I think ultimately game changing stuff is, is very functional and practical and something that maybe all of us won't really realize or even NFTs in the future, you know, but man, the community and the fun part of it is really driving so much of it forward. So it's, it's, it's great to be part of that, you know, there you go. Well, uh, edge quick hitters. It's a fun, quick way to get to know you a little better. There's 10 mm -hmm. questions and we're looking for short single word or few word answers, but feel free to expand if you get the urge. You mm -hmm. ready to dive in? Okay, let's go for it. <laughs> All right. Question number one. What's the first thing you remember ever purchasing in your life? Um, I mean, it was probably like sweets or something, but I guess the first purchase I didn't immediately eat uh, was probably one of those. Uh, these were very cool. Okay. In like 1995. A uh, little friendship necklaces. You get like a necklace that's in two halves. And there's two necklaces, yeah. and you give one to your best friend, uh, and then they form a they form a little pair. Um, I was thinking about that. I was like, if somebody makes an NFT version of that, <laughs> um, right? like yeah. you make oh, them as a pair that, of tokens. <laughs> that's totally an option, <laughs> but so it great. also sort of is uh, it for foretold your your future co-creating NFT art right there. <laughs> um, yeah, probably didn't think it at the time, and. Maybe to take off, it would need to have more 10 year old girls buying NFTs, but uh, yeah. <laughs> right Sounds very there. cool. I like it. <laughs> so, question number two What is the first thing you remember ever selling in your life? Uh, first thing ever selling. Um, <laughs> me and my brother had a scheme when we were kids to, uh, uh, to make pir get pirated CDs off the internet and then sell those. Um, nice. And it was just weird because I remember at the time being like, files on the internet, you know, they're not worth anything. But once you turn it into a physical form, like then it's a CD and people will pay for it. And it's amazing how now, uh, yeah, that's completely gone away. I mean, CDs obviously uh, now are almost kind of old fashioned. Um, and now we're totally used to the idea that NFTs, they're, they're purely virtual, but they're still enormously valuable. So. Yes. And Josh, did we include the anti-piracy disclosure at the beginning? Of this? I wanted to just double check that. Uh, that's awesome. uh, yeah. <laughs> Noted. Uh, number, number three, what's the most recent thing you purchased? Uh, most recent thing I purchased, um, apart from groceries, um, I purchased a slot to take part in the Cola and Paint event because um, it's been exciting to build it and I really want to take part. Um, yeah, that would be a bummer if you didn't uh, if you didn't have that slot, mm -hmm. right? Um, cool. Question number four: What's the most recent thing you sold? Um, probably like pandemic related house clear out. I think I've sold some uh, some spare junk on on Gumtree. <laughs> um, <laughs> Your background is looking very feng shui. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like eliminate. Well, you just can't see the floor, but. <laughs> I feel like we've all accumulated too much um, during this time. Question number five. What is your most prized possession? Um, I would say my most prized possession is uh, my bike because I got it from my mum. Uh, it's a nice a 1980s steel road bike. Um, I, you know, eventually it's going to get nicked and I'll be sad, but mm. um, it's just fun to ride. Um, yeah. Uh, do you uh, do you ride mostly uh, for for transit? You know, for short trips and whatnot. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, now since pandemic, we've been fully remote, so I don't have to go into the office anymore. But uh, yeah, uh, short trips always always on my bike. So um, right on. One of the most efficient forms of transportation. Absolutely <laughs> true. Question number six: If you could buy anything in the world, digital, physical service, and experience that's currently for sale, what would that be? Mm -hmm. I guess if money was no object, one of those trips into space or to the moon would be cool. <laughs> I, you went, when somebody yeah. says, when moon, I want to be able to reply, Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that, I'd take that, a trip to the moon. That's special, yeah, that would be something else. And uh, yeah, not easy to come by either. <laughs> Question number seven, if you could pass on one of your personality traits to the next generation, what would that be? <sighs> That's a tough one. Um, 
what can I think of that's not like massively blowing my own horn? Um, I guess I, I like learning new things. Um, and I think that's quite an important trait to have. Uh, like mm -hmm. it's good to be able to, uh, to, to like learning about new stuff because there's so much cool new stuff coming out all the time um, that I think that's the trait I'd most like to pass on. And we're all the beneficiaries of that uh, trait, I think, <laughs> with, uh, with this amazing project. Um, mm -hmm. Flip side though, if you could eliminate one of your personality traits from the next generation, what would that be? Uh, something like sort of lack of chill. <laughs> it's easy. I, we, we were, we've been building this project. And of course, you know, it's always like, just when you're about to release it, you see and someone goes like, oh, is it meant to do that? And you go, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all, it's all a bit, all a bit of a last minute panic, sometimes getting things out. So often I say to myself, like, be more chill, you know, relax, it'll turn out fine. Um, yeah. And it pretty much has done in the end. So I agree with that. Yeah. Question number nine. What did you do just before joining us on the podcast? <laughs> um, prepared the demo. <laughs> I was like, let's really make sure, get, get rid of those bugs. And also we launched the second voting phase um, of uh, Cola and Paint just this afternoon. So there was a lot of um, making sure everything on that was ready to go. Um, so that's, yeah, that's what I did today. Cool, busy times, but I'm glad you mm -hmm. gave people the car some time out to be with us here. Last one, easy question. Number 10, what are you going to do next after the podcast? <laughs> um, well, it's the, it's the end of the afternoon here. So I think quite possibly crack open a beer. <laughs> right on. All right. That sounds good to me. Well, cool. <laughs> well, 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 thanks for playing uh, some edge quick hitters with us. We appreciate it. And uh, really just overall, thanks for, for taking the time to spend with us today and, and share with our listeners this amazing project. Um, mm -hmm. I know everybody's going to get really excited. I definitely implore all of our listeners to, to take a, a minute and head over to uh, YouTube to check out the video of the demo. I think you really get the, uh, the full expanse of everything we were experiencing if you see that video, um, mm -hmm. even though Ethan did a great job explaining everything. Um, so we really want to, um, you know, make sure you have an opportunity to share your, um, you know, social handles or, or, or websites where people can go to learn more about you and, and this amazing project. Uh, where should, mm -hmm. uh, where should people go? Um, we're on Twitter, Telegram and Discord. So um, Twitter, um, we've got Fetch AI um, and then Telegram. There's also a Telegram group called, called Fetch, Fetch underscore AI. Um, and then I think there's links from there to our Discord groups. So we're on LinkedIn too. And obviously there's, a, there's our website as well. Perfect. That's great. And I think we, we mentioned it a little bit earlier, but we do want folks to uh, keep an eye out on our social channels for details around uh, the amazing uh, giveaway and contest that we'll put together for this, mm -hmm. uh, this artwork that we selected. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So keep an eye out for that. Okay. Well, I think we've reached the outer limit at the edge of NFT for today. So thanks for exploring with us. We've got more space for adventures on this starship. So invite your friends and recruit some cool strangers that will make this journey all so much better. How? Go to iTunes right now, rate us and say something awesome. Then go to edgeofnft.com to dive further down the rabbit hole. Want to help co-create Edge of NFT with us? Got guests you want to see on an episode? Questions for hosts or guests? An NFT you'd like us to review? Drop us a line at contact at edgeofnft.com or tweet at us at edgeofnft to get in the mix. Lastly, be sure to tune in next week for some more great NFT content. Thanks again for sharing this time with us today. 